Hi, K-Watchers, it's Leanne. Hi, everyone, it's Juliet. Welcome to the K-Watch Party, the podcast where we watch and recap all our favorite Korean reality shows. This is a very special day. We are very excited to have our very first guest on the podcast. We are so excited. You guys know her as a salmon, salmon filet cooking, badass career woman with the emerald earrings and amazing mom to Jackson. She's also the podcast's favorite cast member, hashtag justice for Sora. We're so excited to have Sora Lee from Love After Divorce here today. <laughs> Sora. Yay. Hi. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here. I think this will be a really fun time and um, get to know you guys a little bit. And I know um, I heard through the grapevines as a caveat that you guys talk a lot of shit. So please do not associate me with any of their crazy takes from previous episodes because I haven't listened to it. Not that I just because I'm on it doesn't mean that I'm endorsing all of their messages. I'm just here to have fun and, you know, get to know a yes. couple of yeah. who are in the Bay Area also. Yeah. Definitely don't hold anything we say against Sora because, yeah, we, we talk hella shit. And, you know, that's just like, that's just our MO. Um, today we are recording the Monday after the finale. How do you feel now that the show is over? Um, like a sense of relief. Uh, it's actually been crazy past few hours. So right now it's 10 a.m. on Monday. Um, and overnight, you know, like I think Korea just went to bed, right? Um, like everybody's Instagram accounts have been blowing up. Um, especially couples that matched. Um, and yeah, and I just you launched my YouTube channel this morning. Ooh, Congrats! Wow. You want to tell us a little bit more about your YouTube channel? Yeah, so because I'm very outspoken and I'm an extreme extrovert and I've been told to start YouTube like for a long time and I'm like, I don't have time. Who is the time to edit and who's going to watch it? Their ROI is not there really, right? But I do have a lot to say and just the positive comments I've been getting from the viewers on YouTube videos of me or on my Instagram, I've, you know, worked up the courage to, you know, start posting. And yeah, I did like, a, you know, the 73 questions with Vogue style, but I just flipped and I made it 37 because, you know, it's 30, 73 is too long. Um, so I just filmed it really yeah. quickly in Singapore with a coworker of mine. On that note, did you ever think that you would end up on a reality show? Um, no, I mean, even when I was going through the interview process, um, there were like four, at least hour long each, interviews and like I wasn't sure if I was gonna get the part um so I don't really watch a ton of tv um I don't really watch reality shows and it was my friends who told me to like apply so I applied and I just kind of well I knew there were some interesting things about me that could be you know clickbaity about my job or um my divorce or, you know, my son's pretty cute and he's like pretty screen ready. So I felt like there are some nuggets that the producers could work with. So I, I, I thought there was some chance, but um, yeah, I'm really happy that, you know, they chose me. I know they were still um, going back and forth about me because I look too like strong. Um, I can tell you more about this if you're curious, but yeah, I'm, I had no idea and I'm glad I applied and I'm glad I went for it. Well, we definitely say that about you on the show. The first time you walk in, we're like, this woman seems so strong and confident. You were like totally yourself. And that's so great to watch. But yeah, I would love to hear what the producer said about it. Um, I think in one of the interviews, um, this is like something one of the writers told me after the fact when we were having drinks, she was like, she actually pushed for me to be on the show. But some people were like, well, she's crying, but she's so like logical. <laughs> <laughs> and just talking about her experience like like is this girl real um no I'm really glad that um because I have like a resting bitch face I, I think if you don't know me if I'm not smiling like I'm not I don't look very nice and I think that's kind of by design like I'm okay with the fact that not everyone's gonna like me in a way like if I have a wall up I feel like people who really want to get to know me will enter if that makes sense like kind of lowering the bar so I only bring in the intentful customers <laughs> Yeah, I think that's amazing, too, because you attracted, I would say, an international audience. If, you know, maybe you were in Korea, that would have been a little bit too far outside of what they're used to. Whereas mm -hmm. I think 
here, you, I mean, you you brought people like us, Korean American women, who love to see other strong Korean American women or Asian American women. So that I think worked in your favor. You know, as I mentioned, you're our favorite podcast, or you're our favorite cast member from the show. When you went on, we we mm-hmm. noticed there were some people who had like a very strong sense of what they wanted. They played the game really well. Like for example, we we joked that Tom was always too busy exercising and meditating to take action on the woman versus somebody like Hadi. She went in and she's like, "I know exactly what I want. I'm going to go for it." Do you feel like you went in with a strategy, and do you feel like other people knew what it was that they were going for when they got there? Honestly, I think that's such a struggle. Like my first marriage. Failed, and I don't really trust myself that I know what I I know what I'm doing when it comes to finding men. Like I don't trust myself with that. Like so, I didn't really go in with any expectation. So that's one. Another is um again, like I know I'm not a typical Korean guy's like style of beauty, and I said it on the interview too. Like how many guys do you think picked you as the first pick um, on day one and I was like probably zero like like why because I look very strong on the outside so I I knew that going in um it was more like because you know I I don't feel like I need a man to be complete and I know a lot of um comments I see oh you'll find somebody like you're so great like someone will recognize you I don't think that's a requirement for me to feel whole like I have a great life. Um, like my son brings me so much joy. And even without all these external factors, I mean, something I'm working on and everyone's working on like self-love. Um, yeah. I'm not there yet fully. I don't know if, if all of us will ever get there fully, but it's a journey. But um, yeah, I didn't have any expectations going in. Did you, I guess on this journey of self-exploration, how much of the show did the show help you in that way? What what did you learn most about yourself or like the things that you were working on? Did the, the show like bring that up and, and push it in any way? Um, I think that I definitely need to express because on while on the show, um I'm a very growth mindset person. I don't know if you guys remember the scene where I bring um Ask Ricky out while he was eating breakfast, which mm-hmm. I got some shit about you know bothering him while he was having breakfast like we have no set schedule so like if I can grab time I'm like nervous about asking him so I'm just gonna go for it so I asked him outside and then um yeah like no feelings left whatsoever happy for you and Harim um but I just want to learn from this experience did you have any idea that I was interested in you and he was like no way but then there's also the argument that because he wasn't into me in the first place, he didn't notice subtle signs. But um, the moral of the story is that I need to be um, more expressive. And that theme came up again when I went on a date with someone. It was one of those five dates. Um, I, one hour second date, he was like, I was surprised that we, you know, we got to talking again because he didn't get any sense that I was into him. Mm. And but my, I, th- I was like... <laughs> But I ordered a second drink and he was like, how is that a sign? It's like, well, I value my time. And if it's not it, I'm leaving. But I ordered a second drink. That's such a big sign. And why don't you get it? But um, he was like, well, other women would be like, you know, you have beautiful eyes and like, blah, blah, blah. But I'm like, but you didn't earn them. You're born with it. Like, I don't, I don't. (laughs) Like work harder. Everybody needs to work harder for this. This doesn't just come easily. I love that. Like, you're like a second drink means I'm super into you. The rest of us are like a second drink just means like I am an alcoholic and it's a free drink. <laughs> yeah. When we were watching, we were quite shocked to see that you were attracted to Ricky because he's, he's like seems so different from you. Obviously, you're very strong, confident. He's much more laid back. Um, curious to know what was it that interested you. Um, he's a good listener, but also mm. to set the tone, set the context, there's only five guys and there's so much <laughs> right. pressure right. to match with someone like at, until like, was it day two or three when we all rebuild our age? Um, until that point, um, when I like, actually Tom really helped me through it. He was like, just because none of these five men choose you doesn't mean that you're not lovable. Um, it's just that. I think I talked to him about this at the beach. I say, you know, 
just because we have different, you know, shoe sizes doesn't mean that I'm wrong and you're right. It's just I didn't have a shoe that fit my, you know, feet. So yeah. on this show, but there's a lot of pressure and like all the girls and like the producers and the staff, like they work so hard. And I feel like I we would be like failing them if like none of us matched because they tried so hard. And that's all we talk about all day long. Like, oh, like, what do you think about A? What do you think about B? And like, oh, I think C likes you. And like, you know what I mean? And it was just that, it was just the vibe. And I, I think if I had met all of them, like, out in the wild, like, probably not. Um, But it's like, okay, if I'm going to choose somebody out of the five, potentially him. But it was like nothing like, oh my God, I'm so in love with him. I like him so much. It was more like, you know what's in front of me kind of like the, the the one that rose to the the cream of the the rose the of the top of the, yeah the best of the vibe um, um but when you mentioned the producers because i think this is a big question and it came up in our fan questions too it's like how much of the producers talk to you guys are they egging you on are they on the sidelines um, not at all people? not at all they just you know they just we have like date prompts or they would text us about, um, this is how we're going to do the stamp thing this morning. It's going to open at this time, close at this time, like that type of announcements to everybody, but not like, I wish they had, I wish I got to talk to the first th three season contestants to kind of understand how do I get more airtime? Like what things do I need to do? Cause I had no idea. I think in a way that kind of made all of us, um, a, a little bit refreshing because we, we're not like avid viewers of the show and we don't look like manufacturers. So a lot of the interactions are more organic. I think as a result, it could feel more like a slow burn. Like it's kind of a slow building, but because we were like all acting in a very organic way, the producers don't do anything. And they were like, sometimes like, I wish I could tell you, like there's so much I, I we wanted to tell you while we were on the show, but like they couldn't. Yeah. I think we appreciate as the viewers a more, real experience and we said it on the pod we're like you know you watch like kind of like singles inferno like these kids are all here to be models you know and actors and like it feels like you guys were just felt more real like you're really here to like meet somebody and it, and it was very refreshing yeah we're not tall enough to be models let's be real <laughs> 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 we're all old and like the the singles inferno i'm sure they're all there in 20s never had kids yes. no we're stretch ready. marks <laughs> whole life ahead of them I know. I, I know. There's the age reveals there are like mostly how young they are instead of how old they are, like uh, on your show. I know. I was so shocked. Um, that leads to my next question. A lot of the personal reveals as they were coming out were had real curveballs and they were so fun. We personally mm -hmm. loved the age reveal. What reveal was most surprising to you and which one changed, do you think, the dynamic with the cast the most? Mm. I would say the age reveal and the child reveal. With the age reveal, oh my god, I totally thought that Jerome was younger than me. <laughs> like, because the way he acts or how he looks. Right. But I think the way he dressed, like he wore a lot of plaid shirts on purpose <laughs> to make himself look younger. I think that's something producers requested of him. Um, what we did was, you know, there's that um, Korean. Um, international students like school international high school in the yongsan based area he went there and i have some like opas from college from berkeley who went there and i'm like oh do you know so and so and so and so and he was like oh yeah those are like my sunbes that i know oh so he's trying to throw you guys off a little bit <laughs> and then he did i thought she was so much younger than me Mm. He so I think it's glowing. It's like, you know, like some like really clear, transparent, like translucent, like very pale skin with like rate like radiating pinkness from within. Yeah. Um, and then the child reveal was, I think, um changed the dynamic. Um Harim and I actually we actually both knew that we had kids because we shared a room and in, in the bathroom um it's when we were changing. Funny, like right? we could see we could see stretch right. marks right. and like you can see like I mean even though like Harim has no gut, like you can see the little you know what I mean, the skin. Yeah. Like and like we saw and then we didn't say anything because we had mics so on like, okay, you and then like and he's like, Yeah. <laughs> um so we knew. And then um Ricky's was really surprising, I thought. 
Yeah, yeah we were shocked by that too. We were surprised by Tom's too. Yeah, Tom for sure. Mm-hmm. Because he lives such a, a focused life. You know, he's always right. working he's like out. focused on himself a lot, which we were like, oh, usually when you're a parent, you're like letting a lot of that go. But he was so determined. So we're like, how, what, how did he have a kid? Mm-hmm. But I do think when you have kids, like you want to show that, oh, like mommy reads and mommy works out and mommy takes care of herself. And, you know, I feel like I do more corrective behaviors to inspire him. (laughs) A lot of our actions are, we see our actions now reflected in our kids' eyes. Mm -hmm. And it really regulates how we react and act in the world. Um, Oh, another thing we were talking about Jerome and we just, I, well, I personally love NRB and I usually try to drag me in and then we have a good time, but I love to see your scenes with Jerome singing. And I'm, how was that? How was Jerome singing? Was it like, they made it seem like that's all he was doing every (laughs) night. And we joke on the pod, like he thought he was at like a church retreat. He was just wanted to play all the time and have fun. No, I think, um, I guess one tip that I wish I'd known was that you need to force a lot of one-on-one chats outside of the house, outside of common areas, which I didn't do any of, Mm -hmm. right? And I think some people were so good at it more than others. And, um, but Jerome and I were just like, there's nothing like, what is, what's the word, like romantic going on between us. It was always like kind of an oppa dongseng vibe, but, um, Cause like other people are like chatting up with others. I'm pretty sure like now that I know what happened, like he was probably anxious that Benita is talking to other people and like, cause she was like trying to get to know everyone, which I think is the right approach. Um, yeah, we were just like, let's kill time. He's actually a terrible singer. He wouldn't be offended if I said it because he said when he was um in that ex large band, they got him some vocal coaches to get him to sing better, but he just like does not have. The pitch. pitch, like he can't. He can do the beats, mm. apparently, because he was a rapper. But like, he just can't sing. And there's some videos that I am going to post on my YouTube of our <laughs> um, karaoke. But yeah, I love singing. Um, and it really and- seemed like you guys bonded together. And since I know that the Instagram is open, and we've kind of been following along, and you guys like still hang out, which has been mm-hmm. really nice to see. Um, and I'm curious if who you were closest to while you were there. Yeah, I was definitely closest to Benita out of all the women. Like, we shared the bed together, and um, she just, like, is very calm and collective. She has this, like, Onni aura. So even before the age reveal, I just started calling her Onni, and she, like, like knew that that's probably the case. Um, And, yeah, like, she was, like, always, like, taking care of me mentally. Um, Mm -hmm. And, like, I think the first two nights I had nightmares about, like, related to not getting chosen Mm. and like you know like she'd be the first person that I would tell like as soon as we wake up that I just had a nightmare um or um Tom out of the guys was my like oppa like very much like we had a tea time for an hour and none of that got aired because there was clearly no romance and it was very much like we talked about like growth hacking like growth mindset habit stacking you know the yeah <laughs> like yeah. we just talked about stuff like that like neuroscience like the importance of meditation and stuff like that and it was just like a TED talk between me and him um, yeah, and we were just like sharing it. tips on like how to optimize our lives I think the editors in that one scene you guys go on a large group date you take the ATVs out to the swimming hole and into you uh-huh. Hadim Tom Ricky and Jerome and you guys are swimming and it the editor just made it seem so like triangly triangular I guess uh, was mm-hmm. it as awkward as it felt to us as a viewer or did you not even notice um we didn't really notice it was just like kind of cold and um <laughs> like like the energy water, was water cold. was cold no water, oh, was, water cold. was literally cold yeah. I see yeah <laughs> and then um we were not sure if you were all going to go in and like, what about the makeup and hair? Like it was more mm-hmm. that. And then we had just met also. Um, and like just getting to know each other. I, I'm when you're watching the show, are there things mm-hmm. that are surprising you or also as you're watching, are you like, Oh, they edited out this really funny part or a big moment. Have you noticed any of that? Um, there was like, 
a lot. I think there's a lot of funny moments, but again, like this is not a sitcom. Like this is supposed right. to be romance. So <laughs> unless there's like more like love triangle or like romance things that they could build upon, like they didn't really, you know, put that in. Yeah. For me personally, the biggest like regret or the sadness is when we were doing the basketball, I am pretty sure I made at least two shots. Like I remember specifically, vividly high-fiving Benita and Jerome. Like they really played that up. They made uh, you look like you could yeah, not. Yeah, I made it in. Uh, you, you, you should post that on your YouTube. Is you just like dunking, making shots, uh, just dribbling around the room. Oh my God. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so funny, yeah. Um, so now that the show has ended, what's changed for you? What mm. are you up to? Um, what am I up to these days? So I've worked on creator products for a long time, like entertainment products. I worked on Facebook Reels. Um, I am working on TikTok right now, as you know. Um, I've always been, like, curious and, like, in awe of like creators working so hard and I think a lot of people think like being a creator you just need a pretty face and it actually takes so much so much to be successful so much to carry an audience and in a way like I have a head start which is like an opportunity that not many people get and I want to use that clout like no matter how temporary that might end up being like I want to be able to leverage that to inspire especially you know Korean women working in the U.S. or Korean women working for foreign companies in Korea like how can I help them um become more successful in their careers but um yeah I, I wanted to use the platform um and the attention to inspire and you know, provide entertaining and educational content, hopefully. So that's something that's changed in me. I think before I was too shy and I was very worried about looking like an attention whore. And like, I think like we all are in a way, right? Like it's, yeah, like, but who cares? Like, I want to do this and I only live once and I'm only 33. I have like so much life ahead of me. Um, tell us more about that YouTube though. I want to, I want to give, I want to shout that out. I'm going to write it in the show notes. So what's, what's the channel? Um, I named it Gumman and Sora Onni, so it's Sora Onni with a lot of dreams. So in I guess in English, like um dreamer Sora Onni, but it's I have a lot of interest and I think I'm good at a lot of things, except for flirting, but um <laughs> there's like because I've been living alone since high school. So I feel like I have a whole lot of like tips on how it's how to manage households. I love entertaining and hosting. I love cooking, but I'm also very busy. So I feel like I'm very good at, I'm very operationally minded. Like I can cook a whole Thanksgiving meal by myself within like four hours, like not including the brining time. But again, this is also, you know, trauma response, like hyper independence, but like, you know, but like I can do that. And like one time I even fit in a wedding dress fitting in between. We we saw you make salmon for everybody. It was, yeah. you, you were just like a machine on the stove, just <laughs> salmon, salmon, salmon for everybody. It was crazy. Uh, we yeah. actually had an, we, we have, um, our friend wrote in and their big question for you was, they're having a debate in their household, Tim and Katie are, about how you should start your salmon. So do you start it skin side down with the sear or do you start it with the flesh side down? And then what are yes. your thinking? on your strategy so actually skin on is the correct answer mm -hmm. and at the time i was somewhat new to searing salmon like usually i cook salmon in a foil and i like to put like yuzu you know the korean yuzu tea with honey i like to put that on top that's how i typically make salmon so um mm -hmm. on instagram where i'm cooking salmon for like a bunch of friends um you will see that i put in the salmon skin on first okay. Right, good. Yes. Okay, we'll put that to rest. Yeah, we, we brought, brought we brought, um, uh, growth. Growth. tremendous growth right. from the show. We brought that up in our podcast, in our first podcast, and then we were like, I'm upset about that, but I'm also upset that she was cooking when everybody else was like, you know, flirting. And I'm like, Sora, come on, there's all these men out there. But I know it we're all we're all on the journey here. Mm -hmm. uh, that leads us to some more ma mailback questions. We had some of our Instagram uh, fans write in and Kirby Koo asked, did any of the final couple surprise you? Actually, Jerome and Benita, like Benita is not one to be like, 
she tells me like, oh, I talked to so and so, and I am thinking this, I'm thinking that, but like, Jerome and Benita were so surprising. Mm. Only because like personalities are di- no, dissimilar. More like if only because like Benita like we shared the bed, right? So if she was gonna choose him, like she didn't tell me that she was going to, or like. I wasn't that close to Jerome where he would be telling me that, you know, he's going to go into her um, very swill, but that was surprising. She always made, and I don't know if this is editing, but she made it seem like it's always a very last minute decision. Like Ferris wheel, she played us. It felt like in the Ferris wheel, she wasn't going to choose him. And we're like, I was like about to cry. I'm going to be so sad. And then also even last night's finale, she was still just like, mm, I don't know, like writing down her pros and cons list. So I don't know if that's just editing or if that's how actually she just takes time to think about things. I think that's smart though, right? Like we're all going to be on a show, like unless you're sure why broadcast to the entire world that you were sleeping next to somebody or you cohabitated for a little bit, if you're not sure, yeah. right? And you need more information to make an informed decision. So I don't think it's um, wise to be like, oh, this is the only person. I mean, like, <laughs> who am I to give advice to edit this house? <laughs> Typically, the crazy doesn't come out for a few months yeah. or years, you know? So it's it's just way, I thought that was way too short to figure out if you're going to potentially spend the rest of your life with somebody. So yeah, mm-hmm. I get that. But I think that there are people that... Um, looked more like as positive after the show like if i'm interacting in real time like terom's like a totally caring oppa outside of the toursing house um outside of cancun but in cancun he was kind of playing a role of like young like kegujangi like playful guy um but, but he's actually more serious potentially in real he life he could be more serious and i think he was like nervous so he was like putting up a front you know how sometimes like if you're like a funny character like you like act funnier because you're nervous and I think he had a little bit of that yeah Yeah. but you know you can totally see him as like an oppa or appa vibe like when I went over (laughs) to his house like before we were leaving he would close all the blinds and like I didn't know that's something that adults did and like his house is like so well organized he's such an appa vibe uh okay Diana Rue asked did you have feelings for Tom in the end on your last day? I think the last day was probably that, uh, the beach scene. Mm. So I knew that he wasn't into me and like, that makes me like not even consider. And a couple things, like, <laughs> um, he did tell me like, because I talked about money and I think I was just like stating facts. I wasn't exaggerating, but I think he said it came off like I'm very materialistic which I can understand and empathize and something I should work on. I have like unhealthy relationship with money from my upbringing, like which I'm conscious and trying to unlearn and I'm trying to pass it down to Jackson. But um, that I agree. And then another one was I actually make a lot of sexual jokes like off the camera. It's like none of that aired. I think the... You're bad. Because I'm I'm not... Like, I'm not dating any of you. So I'm just going to be myself. You guys are all like oppas to me, you know? So, um, yeah, so... Oh, I think man, I, I want to look really angelic and kind. Yeah, I want to hear the director's cut with all of the uh, <laughs> the bad jokes. That's the show I want to watch. Um, <laughs> another fan asks, if you had gone to the cohabitation stage, regardless of who the match was, what would you have done? Um, so I did think about this before going on, and I talked to other people like on the show or off the show. This is something I would have done. I like in real life too. Like I wouldn't bring a guy home unless I don't know, maybe six months, unless I'm pretty sure that this is it. And because you know, like when you watch like American movies with like rappers like who grew up poor, and like it was like my mom was a revolting door of men, and like. I don't uh, want that for my son. Um, so what I would have done is because I do have guy friends, right, that who are samchons or uncles to Jackson. So I would have probably um have them meet like outside of the house. Maybe we go to the zoo together or whatever. And then the guy would have gotten a hotel. Um, and then mm-hmm. we can, you know, I can cook up dinner for them. Like that's fine. So we can make dinner together and eat. And then yeah, and then we would go to bed and he would leave. That's probably how I would have done it. 
Well, we wanted to end this by doing a little speed round, get to know, I mean, we've gotten to know you in so many different facets, it's a little like fun thing to do. Um, mm-hmm. So I'm, we're just going to shoot off a few questions and you could give us really quick answers. Okay. And- Ready. Yeah, let's do that. So what <laughs> Korean shows are you, I know you say you don't watch a lot of TV, but I'm curious what Korean shows you're watching. Um, I'm trying to get into moving. I'm on episode one, but haven't got past that. If you could pick any Korean celebrity to be stuck in a prison cell with, who would it be and why? Korean system. You know, I'm a very logical person, so I'd probably choose someone with who's very well respected. Like Yoon Yeo Jung or like, like Oh Eun Young. She's like not an actress, but like someone that all the jail male mates will respect. So like mm-hmm. as a result, like I'll be their like little chief of staff and have you a are comfortable so life. Rational. You are the yeah. most rational for. You're like, how can I get to the top of the prison <laughs> ranking system <laughs> amongst nice. all prisoners? I need to be the the chief of staff to the top dog. Yes, yes, exactly. I mean, like, I can pick a bunch of pretty people and, like, people who are fun to be around, but at the end of the day, like, it's life, and I would assume it's pretty hard life in there, so. <laughs> so the choose way. one, if you could choose one last meal, what would it be? Right. I think there's two. One is, um, if I get, if they must serve it to me, and I, I'll probably pick something that's very difficult to achieve, so I have, like, I buy more time. I love this. I love something this. very rare. <laughs> Best answer ever. Uh huh. And then another one is something I've never had, and something that I'll not be ashamed. This sounds so weird, but like human meat. Like I, I don't know. I'm just curious. I don't want to eat that ever. But like, if I'm about to die, like I am, I'm just curious. You're like killed an endangered bald eagle, and then fry. I want to know what that tastes like, and I'm, I'm dead tomorrow anyway. So there's no cancel. Well, thank you. That was so much fun. I wish we could just sit here and talk with you all day. And it's actually really great to see that who you are on screen is exactly who you are here with us. Um, Mm -hmm. For all the people who are out there listening and watching, make sure you check out Sora's new YouTube channel. Is there anything else you want to tell all your fans out there? Um, No, thank you so much for having me. This was so fun. And um, yeah, grateful grateful for the opportunity to have been on the show. I learned so much and I'm really excited to see What's to come now that the show is over? I know. I'm sure your IG is going to blow up. Yeah. We're excited to see your journey and we're going to be watching you and best wishes and best of luck to everything for you, for you and your son and you on your whole journey. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you. Bye. Bye.